somebody say it is your time to move into the new season somebody celebrate jesus i pray your celebration can be louder if you are shouting to the living god and you've come to the city of the living god can you shout louder hallelujah Woo! give someone a high five say we of those people that turn the world upside down we don't do it quietly we do it with everything that we have been given somebody shout for jesus hallelujah if you see somebody that is not shaking i've allowed you to shake them say we of those that turn the world upside down touch somebody say you haven't met me this version of me has come to one end you have not met the new version of me. Hallelujah. You have not yet seen who I am. This person you see here, tell somebody, take a picture. Because after today, the two pictures will not look the same. They will not look the same. You see me in Chireka today. Tomorrow, I will be overseas. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ngambira neighbor, be my friend now. Come on, neighbor. Acquaint yourself with me while you still can. Because after today, I'll be sitting with princes. I'll be sitting with doctors. I'll be sitting with presidents. You will be able to see me, but you will not be able to come near me. I prophesy to you in the name of Jesus. Let this be the answer that you receive tonight in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So, the president. Find out what my name is right now. Otherwise, you'll say, I used to see that girl at church. I used to see that gentleman at church. People will not believe you because you don't know my name. Find out what my name is right now. Hallelujah. May your name be great as Jesus promised in the name of Jesus. He said unto Abraham, I will make you great and I will make your name great. Somebody say my name becomes great today. Somebody receive the promise. Somebody receive the promise. Hallelujah. Tell somebody my name shall not go, shall not stop in the village. My name shall not stop in village circles. My name shall not stop in house circles, in family circles. My name shall reach the embassies of the world. My name shall reach the doors of the world. My name shall reach all. Touch your neighbor. Say my name shall be recorded in the president's offices of this world. You will not be no more. You cannot be no more. I prophesy it. No man walks with me and stays the same. No man walks with me and remains no more. You are not no more. You are peculiar. You are a royal priesthood. You are something else. Men have not seen who you are supposed to be. That is who you are. Touch your neighbor. See this thing you see around me. This thing you see around me. This thing you think you see is only for a while. It's only for a while. In a blink of an eye, you will see me again. You will see me again. Hallelujah. Ngambira neighbor, better serious. So that as we rise, you also rise with us. Otherwise, Amina, Ojakuma Tula Vakutivi, Mukwateko. Amina, let us move together. Let us run the rest together. So that when the crowns come, our crowns look alike. In the name of Jesus, kings and priests unto our God. Somebody celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. Woo! Find a new billionaire. Say billionaire. Billionaire. Even if you don't yet know, you are a billionaire. Even if there is no money in the bank, you are a billionaire. Even if you have no wallet, you are a billionaire. Even if you have nothing on your name now, you are a billionaire. 
and I prophesy to you, let this come to pass quickly and speedily in the name of Jesus. Somebody celebrate! I'm excited. Touch somebody said today, your miracle shall go with you in the name of Jesus Christ. So help me God. Touch somebody say, before we finish this ministration, you will have received your miracle. Hallelujah. Somebody celebrate Jesus. Somebody celebrate. Woo! Sometimes, this is the prophetic. You get used to these things. They will not work according to traditions. They don't work according to routines and rituals. We do what God wants us to do. I feel like dancing. Please dance with me. You don't need Chidongo. You dance. You don't have to copy what I'm dancing. You dance. Some people are laughing at me. I'm not dancing for you. I'm dancing for somebody. May the Lord confirm that dancing in actual life. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 May it come to pass in the name of Jesus. Somebody celebrate. Hallelujah. The minute that you come, because many people can actually hear about me and know me and never come. But the minute you come face to face with me, that is the confirmation that you are ready for your next season. Hallelujah. Touch somebody say, if you will align yourself today, your season opens up today. In the name of Jesus Christ. That is by covenant, so it cannot be broken. I like how the scripture says, and scripture cannot be broken. He says, have I not said, have you not read in your law that you are God? And scripture cannot be broken. That means if he said in the beginning that ye are God, it cannot be altered. So if he said that this is the season of your appearing, it cannot be altered. If he says today is a miracle day, it cannot be altered. Hallelujah. Touch your neighbor. Say today, if you will align yourself to the Lord, you will get your answer before we finish. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Touch somebody, say prophetic doors. We want to open some prophetic doors today. We will not open no more doors. We are going to open prophetic doors. I pray your eyes are open. I pray your ears are attentive. Hallelujah. When Jesus came here, when my elder brother came here and dwelt among humans, it is quite funny that the leaders of that time had studied the scriptures for 800 years plus. 800 years. They had learned the Torah what we call the Torah. They had learned the Jewish culture, the laws. They had understood and even sort, sort of went into the detail of the law of Moses. Broken it down into books and things to do and things not to do. If God says do not steal, they had put it down. If you look at it, you've stolen. This, is what, this will be your punishment. If you touch it, you've stolen it. This will be your punishment to that detail. And the funny thing is, focus on me, the funny thing is that they had read about Jesus. And all the prophetic books had actually given them reason to expect a Messiah. But when he arrived in the flesh, they didn't know him. When he came face to face with them, they could not tell that this is the man I was looking for. This is the man I am looking forward to meeting. Why? Their eyes were blinded. Their eyes were blinded. In the scripture, when he says we were blind, but now we see, he's not talking about natural blindness. 
he's talking about spiritual blindness. That yesterday, I knew the scripture, but today, I have understood the scripture. Yesterday, I knew the prophetic. I have heard about a thousand prophets, but now my eyes can see the truth of the matter. And when you know that truth, according to scripture, the Bible says that when you know the truth, the truth shall. So today I want the truth to set you free. I'm going to open some prophetic doors. Please travel with me. Ascend with me. I've told you, or I'm laboring to teach you a couple of days ago, the, the things of the prophetic are nothing earthly. As a matter of fact, the things we call miracles, they're not miracles. <laughs> oh my God, they are signs. I've said this before. So if I stand here, and someone is in the congregation, and as a minister, amen, they are healed. As I minister, the revelation hits them, and they are transported, and they are ascended into another realm. That cannot be a miracle. That is a sign. He's only trying to show you that if you are able to see this, the portal has opened. If you are able to grab the word and it reaches some other place in your spirit and your spirit grabs it, it means that where you are standing is holy ground. He's trying to give you the signs that confirm that you've not come to an ordinary place. So that does not become a miracle. The healings and all these things, they become signs. But they are signs that confirm that in the place where you came, the portal is open. Because if it were not open, you are not able to see those signs. Those signs, touch your neighbor, say miracle money. We should call it sign money. It is just a glimpse. It is just a sign. If I stand here and miracle money appears to you, by the time that I've spoken of, it is not the miracle. He's trying to draw your attention to something much more glorious. He's trying to show you that do you see at that point where the money was released, there was a portal that was open. In other words, if you don't focus only on the miracle money, the same portal can release miracle cars. You have not understood somebody. Woo! Touch your neighbor, say the same portal that releases miracle money can release your marriage, can release your wedding, can release your increase, can open up the doors of your ministry, can take you where you need to go. The same portal. And now I want you to understand what prophetic doors are so that when you come into the prophetic, you don't just sit around. I see so many people, when I begin to prophesy, touch somebody say, I've seen so many people that come. And when I start to prophesy, as a prophet, they sit back. The movie has started. The movie has started. Let us watch. Are you sunny? Mm -hmm. And they're the ones that record other people's testimonies. Then they start telling them after the service. I heard what the prophet said about you. Mm -hmm. Tell us the money. The, you must have received the money. Why aren't you giving us some money? You are the ones that will do those kinds of things to remind you of the prophecies that were given to you because they were attentive. But now I want to move you. So help me God. When the prophetic starts, when the Lord starts to speak, number one, it is because he's there. Amen. There is no mouth of a person that can speak away from the body. That means that he is here. And when you hear him speak, it means his hands are doing something. God, I pray somebody is here. His hands are doing something. So while he is speaking to this person, you had better align yourself and open in the same portal. Because it means that the heavens have opened. I need to take you back. I need to take you back. Matthew chapter 3 verse 17. Find the scripture for me take you back that the voice of the lord cannot say anything god can never say anything unless the heavens have opened and the bible says and jesus when he was baptized went up straightway out of the water and lo number one ngambina neighbor the heavens did what so the heavens opened number one the bible says the heavens opened amen that means the portal opens and then he says and he saw the spirit of God descending like a dove. That means that the, door, the, the, the portal opens. Amen. 
And then the spirit of the Lord is hovering. He's already available. The power of God is already available. It is the power of God. It is the spirit of God that creates the atmosphere for the prophetic to flow. So it has to be available. Otherwise, the voice has no business. In the beginning, if you remember, look at this correlation and look at the book of Genesis. The Bible says there was chaos and all these other things. And the, the world was without form and void and all these things. And the Bible says, and the spirit of the Lord was hovering over the waters. He was available. The only thing that was wincing was the word. Follow this sequence. He says that at that time, no, 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 take it back, please. And he says that when he went out of the water, the heavens opened. Touch your neighbor, say, the portal opened. The portal is already open as we speak. If you get out without your miracle, there is a problem. The portal is open. That we need a man of God to touch us. We need something to happen. Something drastic. So it has reduced our faith to action. And yet faith is an intent. It is what it is you know in the spirit. And we have been reduced to, if I don't lay hands on you, nothing is going to happen. And yet, you are coming to the circle where things are supposed to happen. Nambila neighbor, if you don't get your miracle today, we are going to give you 40 days of fasting and prayer. Because the Lord is already here. Let's go back to the scripture. He says that the heavens are open. And then he says that the spirit of the Lord is available. Those are two things that you need. And then the next verse, 17, and he says, and lo, a voice from heaven. Someone say voice. So, what we see here, look at me, what you see here, when the Lord starts to speak through the prophet, is the voice. But that means that the heavens are already open. And it means that the spirit of the Lord is already available. So whatever it is you say in that atmosphere is an utterance of the spirit and will be followed by the same spirit and it has to come to pass. Oh my God, where are the prophets of this generation? When the voice of the prophet, when the voice of God starts to speak, if you have understood that the prophet is the mouthpiece of God, when he starts to speak, it means that the atmosphere is already full with the energy to bring your miracle to pass. It is already charged. Because when God said, let there be light, and there was light, there was no other condition that was missing for that word to come to pass. Because the things that were needed were already there. The portal was open, God was there, the spirit of the Lord had already charged the atmosphere. The way that the atmosphere is already charged today. So whatever it is you need, you need to drop it right now. God, I pray there are prophets here. Touch your neighbor. So when the when the atmosphere is charged, what you need to do is start to speak. Start to speak. Stop looking. Stop looking. And I'm not saying shout. Touch your neighbor. Say so God is a God of order. It, it, we don't expect you to shout because even by intent, I've told you there is there are things you release. So if in this atmosphere, God has already said, given you a promise, given you a prophecy. I would be in the church. I would know that the spirit of the Lord is here. I know there are angels around me. I would be saying, by the time I leave this place, I am going to encounter my miracle before I reach home. Right now, let this person text me. Let this person come back to me. Let this person do the will of God as he said it to me. I will not be seated around watching TV. I will not be looking about what is happening. I'll be focusing on the utterance because that is what is missing. When those two things are already available, what you need is to utter. Let me teach you something. Do you see in the spirit when you start to pray? Okay, when you pray. Amen. If you don't pray, you will not understand what I'm saying. But when you pray, you start to ascend. Prayer is an ascension. So you start to ascend. Somehow, you can start the prayer and you don't feel the prayer. But as you continue, the atmosphere changes. The spirit of the Lord takes over. And then you reach a certain place where you want to speak, but you cannot speak. Touch your neighbor say, if you reach that place, the Lord has arrived. 
the atmosphere is charged. That is when you need to start to speak. You remind him at that point. You say, God, you've said you will make my name great. Let the doors of greatness open. Let every other lip I know, here and there, right and center, north and south, east and west, begin to speak my name. The minute that you say it, the spirit of the Lord is already charged to hand over that assignment to the angels. God, I pray somebody's here. So if you do it right now, just know that you have come to the city of the living God. The angels are already available. The spirit of the Lord is already here. The anything you say in this atmosphere is going to go, it is going to be a sign, and it will come back to you as a miracle. I pray somebody's here. In the name of Jesus, let there be a quickening over what you say, that the miracle arrives immediately in the name of Jesus. Some of you, touch your neighbor, say this is a prophetic embassy. This is not church as you know. So, there are doors that only open by the prophetic. Only. And I'm not saying that the rest of the, of, of the offices are not important. They are actually important. The prophetic cannot survive on its own. It is a fivefold ministry. But there are things that you will not get in any other office, but only in the office of the prophetic. Touch your neighbor, say, for example, prosperity. Say, for example, increase. For example, instant supply. Like you are at zero today, and the next second you are in abundance. That cannot be received from any other office. If you have read the scriptures, you already know that the lady that had nothing, at her time when she had nothing, two particular examples. There's a lady that met Elijah, there's a lady that met Elisha. But in all those examples, what the Lord is trying to show us is that there is a dimension of the prophetic that can create instant supply. Ah! In the name of Jesus, let there be a man today who has understood that the portal is open. You have not understood. Ngambina neighbor, that when we start to speak about instant supply, the portal for instant supply has opened. Are you, are you, are you coming? Are you getting there? So if the prophet, if I call a person and I say, your doors are open. It means that already what is coming down from that portal is open doors. I usually tell you, connect yourself to this. And the people just look at, okay, I will wait for my turn. It is directed by the Spirit of God. I have no business with you unless it is business with God. I don't have any other business. So God calls you. But when the Lord is speaking about open doors, that means even if he is speaking to this man, it means that the portal is still open. You don't look upon this. You connect to the open doors. Oh my God. You open, you open yourself up to open doors because the same God that is speaking to this man about open doors is the same God that has opened the portal. That means it is raining down open doors. I want us to understand this. Give me the book of Revelation, chapter 1. I pray you are in the spirit because that is the only way you will receive what it is you have to receive. Let me show you something. Give me verse 10. Poor Sir John. This is the only thing I want to look at and then I'm going to show you something. He says, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. The voice of the Lord can never come to you when you are not in the spirit. His alignment with us is in the spirit. So the revelator is saying, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. Whichever that day is today, if you are in the spirit, you are going to receive the same answer. He says, I was in the spirit in the Lord's day, and then I heard what? He says, and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. If you are in the body, you will not hear anything. But the things that are supposed to come to you, because that portal is open at that time, you can only receive in the spirit. That means if you distract yourself at that point, you are going to miss out on the opening that is supposed to bring your miracle. That is the place that the Lord is speaking of. And John is trying to help us understand that you cannot hear the voice of the Lord unless you are in the spirit. 
So when you are in the spirit, the things start to happen. Now look, this is chapter chapter one, and he's telling us the things that he saw and the things that he had. Touch your neighbor said there was a door that was opened to him. That is a prophetic door. It is not an earthly door. We are not talking about opening earthly doors. I want to give you understanding. Because when the prophetic doors open, the natural doors open automatically. If you are able to align yourself and access the prophetic door, this is a door. The Bible is talking about doors. And the Bible says that when he was in the spirit on the Lord's day, a door opened. It's the things of the spirit through doors. Through those, there are portals that open up. When the Bible speaks about Jacob and how he laid his head on the stone that was put as an altar before he arrived, the Lord is that was an open portal to heaven. That is why he says, I did not even know that this was the gate of heaven. I had no idea. When he saw it, he just put his head there. That means that here, touch your neighbor, say, Here, where you are, is a portal that is already open. Ah, the portal is already open. It was already open before you came. God knew that when you arrive, if you can only be in the spirit, align yourself to that portal, things are about to happen in your life. You don't need anything else. You just need to align yourself to that spirit. There's an open door. It's always open. It takes a man of wisdom to align themselves to what the Lord is doing. So the Bible says clearly that when he was there, he had a voice. That means before you hear the voice that comes from heaven, there must be an opening. I've already told you that. There must be an opening. That means there is no way the apostle John is actually hearing a great voice as of a trumpet unless the heavens were open for him. That means that the heavens opened first. A door was created for him and then the voice of the Lord came to him. He had already moved. Here where you are, every time that the prophet starts to speak, he's opening a door. Every time that a word is given that is an open door in the spirit and now I, I want us to understand I'm gonna give you some examples of open doors that means some of us have in our own selves closed the doors first we've closed the doors because we don't understand that that is an open door because of ignorance we don't know so when God is speaking to a certain person, we are like, okay, let me wait for my turn. And yet, that is an open door in the spirit. And if we connect ourselves to that and attach ourselves to what the Lord is saying, it shall be the same for us. Because it is the same God that is speaking. You understand? If he says to a man that today is the last day that your pockets shall ever be empty. He is saying something, but the portal is open. The Spirit of God is available. Everything that you need for that word to come to pass is available. If I were you, I would jump onto the courage and I take myself with where the Spirit of the Lord is going so that by the time the word manifests, I have received the same answer. I mean, uh, touch your neighbor, say, that is how the prophetic works. How in the world do you expect that if you are ministering to millions of people, you will give everyone one prophetic word? There are people that don't even get a personal prophetic word and keep receiving testimonies of what it is they had because they have attuned themselves they are wise enough to know that that is a door for me why are you seated there god is saying i'm going to pay your rent you have the same rent issue and you are just waiting for your turn that is your turn if your eyes are open you will connect yourself to that and you will get the same results that is how the spirit of god works i want to show you some things how the prophetic doors are open the Bible speaks, give me the book of um, Revelation, give me chapter 4. And he says, after this I looked and behold, now let us go slow. The same man was in the spirit. Look at me. The same man was in the spirit. And there was a door that opened. Amen? The door that took him to the other place where he had a voice. And the things that he saw. 
that means that he entered a certain realm and he was able to see the things in that realm. He was able to hear what was going on in that realm. Touch your neighbor, say, this realm might be the one that releases your rent. But then the same realm that releases your rent will not release the mansion. So you need to knock on the next door so that it can open up for you. And he says, after this, I looked and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was as if it were a trumpet talking with me, which said, come up hither. He moved from this realm and he went to another realm and he was summoned to another realm. Why? Because every realm gives you different realities. So, let, let, let me break it down in the prophetic. I can speak to you here about earthly things. There are three realms in the prophetic. There is a past, there is a present, there is a future. What you should be concerned about is what is happening in the now. The prophetic happens in the now. So, if I stand here and I call a man and I start to say, I see a place. I see that place. It is on this road after ginger and you go to this place and there is this house and I describe the house. We have moved into the past. But the only reason why we move into the past in the prophetic is to correct. There is no point going in the past. We go there to unearth, to reveal the things that the devil has used against you so that we can remove them and do them and then we go to the future and correct your next level so if in the past your life has been disorganized by witchcraft there was all these things that they did that you will never give birth you will never travel you will never get married we go oh my yatakashata i move from the natural the natural is where i'm speaking to you but then i go into the past that is another realm and i undo on the altar what it is they did to you and then i come back in the natural and then i go in the future and i say in 20 days this is what is going to happen for a man that is watching that is not a movie the same is happening for you that means if there is anything in your past that is stopping you from going forward that means in that same time instead of sleeping say whatever it is that was done with me i attach myself to this prophecy and i am set free in the same way your future shall be a different future after that encounter that is how it works that is how we put the things together they are doors that open Ngambira neighbor there is a door that is open right now as i speak there is a door that is open as i speak because the prophetic voice is the mouthpiece of god and god cannot speak when the heavens are open he only speaks when the heavens are open now today as you are seated there there is power enough for your miracle there is anointing enough for your next level attach yourself to what you are hearing by the time you leave this place tonight there will be a miracle waiting for you let me show you this is the prophetic the bible says this is the only statement i want to give you so that i explain to you he says then elisha says hear ye the word of the lord thus says the lord elijah is speaking in the present he's speaking in this realm amen he has understood by their words what happened in the past he doesn't need to go to the past because the answer that he needs to give the man does not need something to undo in the past so in the natural in the now he says to them hear ye the word of the lord he says tomorrow ah uh -huh. someone say in your future after now in the next two hours i want to bring you to understanding that means he did not he spoke the word in the now 
But before he spoke the word, he went into tomorrow and he saw what will happen tomorrow, organized tomorrow. Then he came back in the now and gave the prophetic word so that the now, the tomorrow, must align itself to the word that he is giving. That is the sequence of open doors. So this, that your neighbor said, tomorrow is an open door. He cannot say tomorrow if he has not gone into tomorrow. That means the door for tomorrow has already opened. He says by tomorrow evening, this is what is going to happen. How is it going to happen? It means that in the spirit, the man has traveled and gone into tomorrow and has organized what will happen tomorrow. And then he has come back in there now and said, tomorrow I see a wedding for you. When that word is being given, you will notice I don't know about other prophets. I know about me. You will notice that sometimes there is a quietness because I am trying to figure out the deadline of this thing, the time that this thing is supposed to happen. Why? Because this is God we are talking about. He's sure about what he's doing. Why are we saying, you know in the future, this is what is going to happen. Which future? We can get into the future. We can say on the 27th, at about seven in the evening, you will meet a man. That man will be your husband. Oh, my Takashata. I pray there is a man here. When that word is being given, Amina, attach yourself to that word. Because it is already in the future. It means that there is a door for tomorrow that has already opened. That means you also say that things that somebody said, you said that things that you want to see by the 27th. I don't know what day today is, but now if I say tomorrow to somebody, it means that the things are already we are already moved into tomorrow. So you, you say about your life the same way that thing will happen is the same way I will have gotten my visa. Same thing. It is the same power. It is the same thing. That is a door that has been opened. The way that prophets move, the way that prophets do the things they do is because they have the ability to move into this realm and then move into this realm and move into this realm. Let me break it down for you. I can speak to a man here. That is a natural or let's say personal prophecy. And that is at a different dimension. And then I can move and say, you know what? Something is happening in Australia. There is floods, but they are about to be fires. I am not saying that, by the way, I'm saying that literally. I'm not giving an example. So it means that I've moved from the dimension of the individual prophecy and I've entered another dimension that is now watching over the entire world. The minute you see that, it means the entire world is available. It has been opened for you somebody say let us not leave you this thing we are doing is for you today the door and the doors must open you must receive what it is you want if you are aligning yourself to the word of God that is what we call prophetic doors if you fail to align yourself to what the prophet is doing they, they've left you outside let me show you something give me the book of Matthew chapter 24 give me about verse 10 uh -huh. you read for yourself and five of them were, and the other were, it is not me, it is scripture. Give me verse 10. And then the Bible says, okay, we ha I don't know if you've heard this story, but you should have heard the story or read the story. And this is the most important part. The Bible says that they wanted oil, and then the foolish ones had already spent their oil. So the wise ones say, no, it will not be enough. Go and buy from those that buy. And then the Bible says, and while they went to buy, the bridegroom came and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage. And what? Read that last part. And that door was shut. First part there. Do you see where we read in the book of Revelation that when John had come to that other place, he says a door was opened. It was open for him, not open for everybody. That means that when the prophet starts to speak, he has opened the door for you. But it is for that moment, so that when he enters, you also enter. 
Ngambila neighbor, Bwagamba marriage. Please enter that door. Who is with me? If we say your marriage, this is what is happening. The doors are opening today. The man's heart is turning back to you. This is what is going to happen. Please, if you have a marriage issue, please enter the door. Because we are about to shut the door. If we shut it and you are still outside, you will have missed your portal. You will have missed your open door. Do you now know how the prophetic moves? You cannot fail to get your miracle. The Bible says, and the door was shut. Give me the next verse. And then he said, Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. These are not natural doors. They are spiritual doors. You have heard me say, usually when I call for some people, maybe to give a seed, maybe to do something, according to the prompting of the Lord, and I usually say, don't come to me after, because that is a waste of your time. The window has already closed. I'm telling you, the window has already closed. It is only open for that moment. So in the natural, uh -huh, in the natural, I am there. In the natural, you are there. You have just come to realize. But the other window that is supposed to give you the atmosphere and push the word to happen has already closed. It is a window. And so, when the Bible says that they say, Lord, Lord, open for us. Give me the next verse. Open to us. He answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Because he can only know you in the spirit. He can only know you in the spirit. If you miss the opportunity, you have entered the flesh. So when you are in the spirit... God recognizes you. The doors open for you. You enter those doors. All the various doors. Do you know in the scripture Psalms 24, 7. Do you know that that scripture says. That lift you up. Ancient doors. It says doors. It doesn't say door. There are many doors. There are many doors. The door of your marriage must open. The door to your finances must open. The door for you to travel must open. The door to your husband's heart must open. The door to big pockets must open. I don't know who I'm speaking to. The door for your family must open. The door for your household must open. There are doors, doors, many doors. So you do well for yourself to align yourself to what the Lord is doing. Because when the door opens, then you align yourself to that door. If the prophet is saying, you know what? Money is coming to you tomorrow. Even if I'm speaking to one man, that man is the example of the open door. You attach yourself to that one. And it shall come to pass because the atmosphere is right. The power is available. It will follow the same word. To fulfill it in your life. I touch somebody say miracle man. What is, look I want you to understand. How is it that I call a man and I say you will receive miracle money tomorrow. And it happens. It is the same mouth. It is the same voice. Look at me. Let's see this and close. Let us understand this and close. It is the same voice. That means that every ingredient that is needed to follow that word to make it come to pass has been released. Now if you wait for your turn I don't know when the turn will come but if you align yourself to this, the same word the same power, the same spirit will give you the same results according to the word that is given. Same time when Elisha said by this time tomorrow was he saying it to a man he was saying it to the entire region. When the food came, it came for everybody. Oh, Jesus Christ. He was not speaking to one man. It is the king that approached him. There was a man next to the king. But there was something that he released to every man. And every man, about this time tomorrow, got money. Touch somebody say, and every man, about this time tomorrow, got miracle money. Okay, if you are here and you are in the spirit, you have already understood what I'm talking about. That is how the spirit of the Lord works. Touch your neighbor, say, there is a door open here. 
the door is already open you do well to attach yourself to the door you do well to open you enter the door while it is still open so that you receive the natural results at the same time that the word of the Lord has said you cannot miss your miracle if you attach yourself to this touch somebody say you cannot miss your miracle you cannot miss your miracle if you align yourself to the prophetic door that has been opened you don't need to worry about anything you know sometimes the things of the world seem like they are too huge i have this problem and i have this problem and i have this problem touch your neighbor say there's an open door and another open door and another open door you can attach yourself to every other open door open door open door so that by the time you leave you don't have problem 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 you have ascended and ascended and ascended and received everything that you are supposed to receive in the name of jesus ah! my yasata kashata somebody give god glory touch somebody said this is the prophetic you came to we are opening your doors we will open natural doors let me show you we open natural doors by the prophetic doors elisha says by this time tomorrow and that is enough and then that word opened the financial doors of the city it opened doors for supply it opened doors for supernatural provision it opened doors for instant supply at the same time he spoke of when you enter this prophetic door by this time tomorrow miracle money will have arrived the miracle will have come the visa will have arrived you will have ascended you will have entered your your new house things will have happened by the prophetic in the name of jesus somebody celebrate jesus i'm excited about what god can do with a man who has aligned themselves to god when the scripture says isaiah 1 19 when he says if ye be willing and obedient you shall eat the good of the land he's not talking about the willingness that we show off in church no because a willingness is the eagerness is the readiness to catch what it is god is releasing and you can only do that in the prophetic when the voice of the lord has come the minute that they say open doors you catch the word that is the willingness he's talking about the minute that you say that wallets are open the minute you say that ministry doors are going to open there you catch the word when you catch that word and then you align yourself to it through obedience you receive the good of the land there is no other way this is the prophetic you have come to you know that you are standing next to angels you know that you have come to the city of the living god you know that the spirit of the lord is already hovering here you cannot live the same way whatever door was closed earlier shall be opened today in the name of jesus christ whatever man forgot you they will remember you today because the portal has opened on your behalf somebody the portal has opened align yourself to that portal and it shall be true for you as well in the name of jesus touch somebody say my door is open the door of the prophetic opens and you don't receive just one door you receive all doors all doors one door opens and it organizes your entire life david fought one battle and this one battle gave him marriage gave his family exemption from taxes took him into the palace he became the second right man to the king one battle that means that that one door that opened organized his marriage and it organized his finances it took care of his family and he it lifted him and put him next to the king in the palace he stopped sleeping in the wilderness he slept 
in the palace. Today, one word, one O, one door shall push you into the king's palace in the name of Jesus. God, I pray somebody's in this place. One place, one thing like this, one door. We don't need all the doors to open. One door gives you access to things that you cannot finish in a lifetime. One door, it was only one door that Elisha opened. And the Bible says the food was flooding. Someone say, abundance. Everywhere I see, abundance. I'm stepping on abundance. Only one door opened and there was abundance in the land. How much more when one door opens in your house? One door opens for you. Hey, the abundance of the Lord shall come to you and stay with you. God, I pray we are together. Someone said the open, the, the heavens are open. The doors are open for me. The spirit of the Lord is here. The atmosphere is conducive. Every word that is spoken has the ability to come to pass as it has been spoken. I will attach myself to that word. I will put myself in the place where I enter the door when the door has opened. The door shall not remain shut on me. I will receive everything that I am supposed to receive. Someone give this declaration. Already God is doing something. Your death shall be cancelled. God shall lift you. He shall take you where you need to go. Let the palace doors open by the prophetic in the name of Jesus. Let the passes, the wallets of other people open. Let their treasuries open for you in the name of Jesus. When that door opens, everything else shall open in the name of Jesus. Somebody celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. Can our celebration be louder?